the climb I've had some weary day and some lonely nights but when I look around and I think things over all of my good days out to weigh my bad days I, I won't complain sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road I ask a question Lord why was so much pain but he knows what's best for me although my weary eyes they can't see so i'll say thank you lord thank you lord i won't complain has been good to me he's been good to me for oh, then there's no world for you could ever be he's been good to me he tries all of my tears away turn my midnight into day so I'll say thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. The Lord, He has been good to me. He's been good to me. More than this old world, or you could ever be. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good to me. He drives all of my tears away. Although my weary eyes, they can't see. So I say thank you, Lord. I said thank you, Lord. I've been lied on. But thank you, Lord. I've been disappointed, but thank you, Lord. The bills are due, but thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. Oh, God has been good to me. Oh, he's been good to me. More than this whole world, or you could ever be. He's been good to me. He tries all of my tears away. Although my weary eyes, they can see. So I'll say thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. Hallelujah. We have nothing to complain about. But why do we complain? The Bible is teaching you and I. I look at Numbers 11.1. 1, it says that when the people complain, it says the Lord heard it and the fire consumed them. God had been doing some things in those people's lives and they had the nerve to complain. We thank God this morning. We want to say welcome again to the New Union Baptist Church, those who assembled in the sanctuary, those who might be sharing with us via the YouTube this morning. We thank God for how he continues to bless us in spite of ourselves. Amen. We want to look at First Chronicles this morning as we looking at what God is saying to the lives of the people. Good to see each of you. Zach, it's good to see you. Amen. Praise God for how God continues to bless us in spite 
of the things that are going on around us. There's a lot of stuff going on around us. Whether we know it or not, there's some stuff that's going on. But in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse number 20, and the Bible reads, And David said unto all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord of their fathers and bowed down their heads and worshiped the Lord and the king. Eternal God, Father, we embrace your presence yet again. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We pray, Father God, that you will continue to bless us through this worship experience. We thank you for our musicians, our soloists, Lord God. We the praise team, the usher, the media, those who have assembled this morning, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that as you speak to our minds and our hearts, we may gather wisdom, knowledge, and above all, Father, we continue to pray for understanding. We thank you. We do love you. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. And the Bible says, and David said unto all the congregation, now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord God of their fathers and bowed down their heads and worshiped the Lord and the King. Just for a few moments this morning, bless the Lord your God. There's a song that says, come on and bless the Lord with me. I was talking to someone the other day and I said, God bless you. He said, well, don't say that. He said, just say enjoy, you know, uh, the blessings of the Lord. I said, well, no. You know, God bless you. What I'm trying to say is, is that the Bible is teaching you and I that if we, get, if we start blessing him, there's a good chance we might bless somebody else. But David, in this lesson, um, we see that he's making his second appeal to the children of Israel. Uh, David, his life is drawing to an end. As we look at the last uh, few verses of this chapter, we'll find that, that David's life is, 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 is coming, uh, drawn to a close, and now he wants to encourage the people that they might encourage his son Solomon. Because God told David that you're not going to be able to build the temple. Your son Solomon, he's the one that's going to build the temple. And, and what we see in this lesson, it, it opens that, that he's making his, his second address to the people. Uh, he says in verse number one, Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has chosen, is yet young, tender, and the work is great. For the palace is not for man, but for God. See, I stopped by to say this morning, we're going to bless the Lord, even though how great the task might be, God is able to empower us to will and to do of his good pleasure. Even though David is encouraging the people we want to encourage ourselves this morning that we might be all that God has called you and I to be. But as we look at this lesson, we'll see David's gift. We'll see the gifts of the leaders. Then we'll see the gifts of the people, how everybody came along and blessed the Lord. But see, not only we see that the people came together and heard the cry of David, David had a praise and a prayer. Now, we've been talking in our Bible study that the thing on the, the word on the street was, where's that in the Bible when praises go up, blessings come down? But don't you know that God moves when we praise him? We go to God in prayer, but, but I, I shared with the Bible study, it's, it's the praise that, 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 that really knocks down the door. Because if I pray to God and I start praising God, I know God is going to move because, you know, I'm not wondering if he's going to show up or not. But see, the Bible wants you and I to know that the things that are going on around us we might not like it. We might not love it. God does not love some of the stuff that's going on in the world today. But I've accepted what the Bible says about these things. Just like God doesn't love it, we as believers ought not love it. But we ought to accept it and continue to encourage one another that as long as we are on this road called life, we need to what? We need to encourage one another in the word of God 
that God might continue to show himself mightily in our lives. But he's showing himself mightily whether we see it, know it, or believe it or not. But see, we witness in this lesson, we will witness the praise of David. Is praise on your lips? See, we praise God even through the bad times. There's a song that says your blessing is on the other side of through. Do you praise your way through the trials and the tribulations of life? I'm pretty sure David wanted to build the temple, but God said, no, not you, but your son. What I'm trying to say is, is that we ought to continue to bless the Lord as we bless one another. But as I hasten to a close this morning, bless means to consecrate. It means to sanctify. It means to render holy. It means to, to, to bestow goods or grant happiness, health, or prosperity. See, that, see, that's what we do. With that. That's how we encourage one another in the word of God. See, you might be going through something this morning. Uh, when we got to here this morning, I, I heard someone say that today is a day for the ducks. Because it was raining. But, you know, I, I, I had to say that, you know, uh, Lord help, today wasn't Saturday. Because today was a good day. When I first woke up, I didn't hear no thunder, but I didn't see no water, but I heard the thundering rolling. And it was very easily, for as Deacon Bamford said, for, for, for me to be like Rip Van Winkle. I think that's who you said. Is that the one that loved to sleep? But what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to the things of God, I thank God for the word this morning. He says, he neither slumber nor does he sleep. And what I'm trying to say is, is that blessed means to pay homage to God as we, were, as we thank God for one another. See, blessed refers to giving honor, giving glory to the God of our salvation. It, it's talking about adoring God. And we have worshiped, uh, we came together today to worship and thank God for blessing us that we might in turn bless him. Uh, see, God has already blessed you and I. And all God desires for you and I, you know, is, is, is to return back unto him because it's not about what God has done in our lives. It's more about who he is in our lives. And we just stopped by this morning to say that we want to glorify God on behalf of one another. But it says that bless also means to bestow, the bestower rather, of divine favor and glorify God. Do you glorify God for the things in which he does in your life? See, we glorify God here at, at the New Union Church because God has blessed us that we might be a blessing. Is that not what he told Abraham? He says that I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your family. He says, I'm going to make you to be a blessing that you might bless somebody else. See, see God blesses us. That we, want, that we might bless one another, and if we're blessing one another, we're blessing God. Uh, yes, and Mother Wade, uh, she blessed us some time ago. But as we hasten to a close this morning, our lesson, and our lesson this morning, bless, it means to kneel. It, it means to, to praise. It means to salute. It, it means to thank God. It, it gives the implication to bless God is in the act of adoration. Do you admire God? See, God can do something that nobody else can do. I know. In Sunday school this morning, I, I heard as we went around the room, we were thanking God for allowing us to put up with people and allowing people to put up with us. See, 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 uh, next month, if the Lord's willing, I'll say it again next month, but on the eighth day of next month, I'll be serving 37 years of a life sentence. Tracy had been putting up with me for 37 years. And I've been putting up with her. But I said that to say that God has been putting up with all of us, all of our lives, irregardless of how old we are. And every now and then, we ought to be blessing the Lord for putting up with us because every time God tells us to do something, we don't always do it. 
Well, I can't say we, I don't. See, I can't speak for anybody else. But see, we salute God because God, he is the maker and the creator of the universe. I love what the, the Apostle Paul says, that, 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 that God created you and I, that you and I might what? That we might be a blessing to him, that we might be able to bless someone else. And then do, 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 do you bow down to the Lord? You don't have to bow down, but, 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 but to pay homage to God, you know. See, see God, he, he wants every attribute of our lives. Did I say that right? Attributes. See, 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 God knows what you're thinking. God knows what we've done. He knows what we desire to do. But in all of that, God ought to be first in our lives. And see, that's what David, he, he wanted the people to understand that we need to put God first. But do, you, but do you look at the dynamics of it. It says here that, that David blessed the Lord. And as David blessed and taught the people about what it means to bless the Lord, it says the leaders blessed the Lord. And then in the midst of the, the king and all of the leaders blessing the Lord, it says the children of Israel bless the Lord. If I call Sister Manly up here right now, she'll start singing, oh, come on, bless the Lord with me. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to help me up in here this morning because I understand that, that the blessings in which God has given you, he, he has given them to us that we might glorify him and that we might share with somebody else that they then too might do just like the children of Israel. They follow suit. They, they follow what the leaders had done because the leaders had followed what the king had done. Right. I'm trying to help me up in here this morning, but as I hasten to a close this morning, you and I have to come to know and understand that the Bible desires that you and I might bless the Lord our God. Oh, come on, bless the Lord with me this morning. But see, when we look at what the Bible is teaching you and I, as I hasten to a close this morning, as, 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 as David was, 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 was teaching the people in, in verse 2, he says, Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God. He talked about the gold and the silver and all the brass and everything that he had to offer. He was willing to give back for the cause of Christ. Are you willing to give back for the cause of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? We often say God is not caught up with what he has given us. Because if God was caught up in the stuff in which he had given us, he would have never given it to us. But God, he blesses us that we might trust to bless him and bless somebody else. But as I hasten to a close this morning, as I look at what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning, it says blessing the Lord is an act of worship. Yeah, there's a many different ways to worship. We worship in the spirit of giving. We thank God for what God has allowed to happen here at the New Union Church as God continue to bless your life as, as you continue to bless the lives of others. And, and most of all, we continue to bless the Lord. What has God asked you to do that you might bring blessing, be a blessing to him and be a blessing to somebody else? See, worship refers to being reverent. It, it refers to honoring it. It refers to paying homage to somebody else. But in this case, it, it's God. We can't bless anybody else before we bless God. Well, that's what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning, but it starts at the top, and it should trickle its way down to everybody else. See, Jesus Christ, he, he blessed the Lord while he was, he was here on earth. He, he always talked about the Father. He, he always prayed and took things to the Father on behalf of the disciples, on, on behalf of the world, because the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, blessing the Lord is an act of worship. See, worship is a sacred parsonage 
giving honor to someone, the object of our blessing, in this case is God, that it might spill out of our lives, spill out from him through us, that it might spill out into the lives of someone else. But see, as I hasten to a close this morning, worship means to adore. It means to render a formal ceremonious service, rendering to somebody that's what, that lead, guides, and directs our past. In this case, it's God. But we, but we don't take lightly how God uses people to bless people. We've been blessed here at the New Union Church. But scripturally, worship means to bow down. It means to prostrate oneself before a superior. See, God is greater than all of us. See, when I was growing up, that was a prayer that they taught us to pray. God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. But see, I learned that it was more than the food that was on the table. I wish I had some help up in here this morning. I, I, I know you all had a different prayer when, when you all was growing up, but, but that's where they started with us, that, that if, if we thank God for the food that we're about to consume, there's a good chance that, that we might thank God for the blessing in which allowed us to purchase it. But what I'm trying to say is, is that when we look at what God is doing in the lives of the people, he is indeed a great God. He's indeed a good God. But, but, don't, but don't get it twisted. God blesses us that we might bless him, and we bless him by blessing somebody else. But it's a part of our worship. It means to bow down. It, it means to, to, to fall humbly flat, you know, to, to pay homage to God. It, it's, it's to humbly Seek God. Do we seek God with humility? Or do we try to tell God like we tell everybody, tell him what to do? I'm pretty sure this morning, someone has tried to tell somebody to do something. But what I'm trying to say is, is that the Bible, even Paul today in, in Sunday school, he was, he was urging us, he, he was encouraging us that we might come to know and understand that, 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 that the word of God is true and we ought to be teaching and telling everybody what thus saith the Lord because even though it might be painful, I heard pain this morning, I, it, even though it might be painful, don't you know if it hurts, it's going to work? Well, I know. It's an old slogan, but you've heard that. If, it, if you don't feel any pain, it's not doing any good. No, no pain, no gain. But don't you know every inch of pain that comes in our lives is for the glory of God? He says that I, I, I allow stuff to come into your life that I might be able to bless you and then you're going to thank me later. I know sometimes it's hard to thank God as you're going through. But if you thank God while you're going through, you're going to get through a whole lot faster than what you're going through. I, I'm trying to help me up in here this morning. But, but I, I love what our scripture lesson said this morning as we look at worship. It says, and David said to all the congregation. He says, now bless the Lord your God. You know, do, do you bless the Lord your God? See, we bless the Lord by, by first of all giving him ourselves. I love what Paul told that church over there at Rome. He, he says, I urge you, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, God more, he cares more about us than the stuff in which he has given us. All God desires is you and I. Uh, that's why Christ came. He came that we, were, that we might accept the works at Calvary, that we might be put made in the right relationship with God. But he says, now bless the Lord your God. And it says, 
and the congregation blessed the God of their fathers. It says they bow down their heads and they worship the Lord and uh, the king. Uh, but, uh, but I know he, he was fast forward and I, I want to fast forward. You know, they were blessing the God, the father of creation. And then, of course, it was blessing the king of kings, the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, because the Bible teaches you and I, you know, he is the king and which came to deliver us. But see, as I hasten to a close this morning, we thank God for blessing us. We see that blessing is an act of worship. But not only blessing is an act of worship, don't you know that the blessing the Lord requires a sense of willingness? See, do, do, do you serve God willfully? Or do you serve God because you desire something from God? Oh, that, that, that's what led us to that discussion in Bible study, you know, you know, is that, you know, we, we don't have to, you know, we don't bless God because he's given us something. We praise God because he has already given us eternal life. He has already given us a way out. He has already, you know, came down through 42 generations, laid down his life and picked it up that you and I might have life. And he did it willingly. See, willingly refers to someone being eagerly inclined to favorably address a need or a task. We're going to talk about COVID-19 here after a while. Because during the COVID season, New Union was blessed. We were coming to church, Trace and I, we were, you know, putting the camera and the computer down in the aisle and trying to make sure the word got out. But, but, but we didn't know that there was a blessing that was on the way. Uh, see, God blessed Mother Wade's family to bless New Union that we got a camera. Yeah, we, uh, you smile, you don't can the camera. But what I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, they did it willingly. See, the praise and things in which we do unto God, it ought to be done with a willful heart because the Bible is teaching you and I that when Jesus Christ came into the world, the Bible teaches you and I, he came for the purpose to lay down his life that the Father might be pleased. But see, willingness refers to someone being eagerly inclined to, uh, to favorably address a need or task. It means to do it voluntarily. I joined the military some time ago, Reverend Manley. See, but when I joined the military, you know, there was a cadence that they used to sing. It says, go to war, go to jail. I think if I'd have stayed back there in the backwoods of Alabama, I might have ended up like some folk that I knew that, you know, you know not, not, to, not to talk bad about folk. But what I'm trying to say is, is that you know, the Bible is teaching you and I that God gives what? He gives us a way out. But I volunteered to join the army. But see, I didn't join the army to fight. I joined the army to get away from home. I, got, I joined the army to get away from rules and regulations, but, but not knowing when I joined the army, that's exactly what I ran into. I joined, I volunteered to go and see the world. I, I wanted to travel. What I'm trying to say is this thing called voluntary, you know, God does not make us do anything, but he desires that you and I might do it willingly. I willingly joined the military, but it was some, quite a few years, bro, preacher, that I learned that I joined, Deacon Manley, I joined the fight. I, I, you know, fighting was the last thing on my mind. But see, willingly means to do something cheerfully. It means to freely be readily able to do something. See, see, the word on the street is we need to be willing, we need to be ready because God is indeed, he's able. And, and God will pull off each and everything that needs to be pulled off in our lives and he does it willingly. What about you and I this morning? See, see, willing means to, 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 to offer services to meet, you know, to, to, to satisfy a need. See, see, God has satisfied the need in our lives with the understanding that you and I need to know that God is what? He's a very present help 
in time of trouble. See, you're too late now. You're too late. You're too late. But look at the word. It says here in verse number five. It says the gold for the thing. He, he said the gold for the things of gold and, and the silver for the, the things of silver and for all manner of work to be made by the hand of the artificers. He says, and when they're willing, and he said, and who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord. See, are you willing to, to, to bless the Lord? See, that's what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning, that, that, that God is willing, God is ready, God is able. What about you and I? But look what it says here in verse number six, as I hasten to a close. It says, then the people, they rejoice. See, see, rejoice is a part of worship. It says that they offered willingly. See, see, we all, you know, that's why we don't beg, borrow, or steal, because God has freely given and we ought to freely give back unto the Lord. And what I'm trying to say here as I hasten to a close, it says, it says the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel, verse 6, and the captains of thousands and hundreds, the rulers for the king's work offered willingly. Verse 9 says the people rejoice and, and they, they offered willingly because the, with a perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord and David the king, he also rejoiced with great joy. So, but what I'm trying to say is, as I look at verse number 17, he says I know also my God that tries the heart. It says, and has pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things and now have I seen with joy thy people which are present here to offer willingly unto thee. See, see what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning is that we, when we bless the Lord, when we do things God's way, God will indeed bless us. And then by God blessing us, we ought to be looking at what everybody else doing, you know, and then we do what? We bless the Lord together. That, that's what the Bible is teaching you and I. You know, I love what the Bible says. We ought not be given grudgingly. We ought not be given by necessity. We, uh, we, he says that we ought to be given cheerfully. We ought to be given willfully because God indeed love a cheerful giver. I'm trying to help me as I go to my seat this morning. The Bible teaches you and I that if we're going to bless the Lord. It is an act of worship. Not only that is it an act of worship, the Bible teaches you and I that not only that when we bless the Lord, we do it willingly. The Bible is teaching you and I this morning, we bless the Lord because he alone is worthy. Yes, he is. The Bible teaches you and I that God alone is worthy of all of our praise. Not only our praise, but, but everything in which you and I have, everything belongs to God. That's what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning, but worthy, it refers to someone who having and adequate and a great merit. Their character, their value uh, is com uh, commendable. What I'm trying to say is the Bible is teaching you and I that we serve a God. He is ready, re ready rather, he's willing and he's able and all he desires is that you and I might have the same attitude. If Jesus Christ thought worthy of us to lay down his life, then does not the Bible say that we ought to be doing the same? Yes, the, yes it does. Look over there in John's letter. Yeah, you look, look over there in his epistle. You, you know, just like Jesus Christ was willing to lay down his life, you and I ought to be willing to lay down our lives. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is that Paul told that church at Corinth, he said that we ought to die daily. Yeah, he said the flesh, we, we ought to be crucified. We, we ought to be killing the flesh each and every day that the will of God might work in our lives. See, see uh, some folk are not willing to work because the flesh has gotten in the way. But if we kill and crucify the flesh each and every day. The Bible teaches you and I that whatever God desires for you and I to do, we go worship him. We go worship him willingly because God alone is worthy. See, worthy in our lesson, it refers to deeming a person admirable, decent, deserving, and most of all, someone that's honorable. See, worth means to have sufficient merit of value. See, nobody can do us like Jesus. You've heard that song, can't nobody do me like Jesus? Can't nobody to do me like the Lord. See, that, 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 that's a true statement. And, and what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning, that, that God is worthy of our praise. See, worth means to have sufficient merit or value. A person distinguished from everybody else. The Bible says, God, there is nobody like me. That, 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 that's what he says over there in Isaiah. You know, he said, there's no one like our God. 
Nobody like him. No, nobody that I know. No, nobody that we can come up with. See, someone who is noble. See, see, God is noble. He, he's reliable. You, you can depend on God. See, I thank God that y'all don't call on me. You, you, because I really can't help you. But I, I can pray for you. I can share some scripture with you. But if you're gonna get through what you're going through, it's gonna be the one who is worthy to get you through it. Uh, what I'm trying to say, I know that he'll use you. He'll use me to, to pour into somebody's life. But the Bible says that God gets the glory because God is the one that's did all of the work. See, see, in other words, you know, God is reliable, and you know, and 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 it says that this word worth it means satisfied. See, God satisfies Himself. That's what Jesus Christ did when he laid down his life. He satisfied himself. I'm trying to bring this thing to a close this morning. But as I take, a, take my seat, it says here in verse 14, it says, but who am I? Have you ever asked yourself, who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort. He says, for all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. In other words, it started with God, and now we're giving God back go do something in which he has given us. And God desires that, what, that our lives might be given him. He is the one that has given us life. He is the one that desires and, de and deserves that we might dedicate, give our lives back unto him. But as I hasten to a close, in verse number 16, he says, but O oh Lord, our God. He says, all this store that we have prepared to build thee and house from thine holy name cometh from thine hand and is all thine. Everything that we do is for the glory of God. Everything starts with God. Everything is going to end with God. It says, who's worthy? God alone is worthy. God has blessed you He's blessed me. He's blessed us. And all God desires is that we come to the understanding that we must worship him. Not only that we must worship him, we must do it willingly because God alone, he's worthy. We thank God for what God is doing in the life of the believer, what God has done for the believers here at the New Union Church. The Bible used one of his servants to bless us that we might be a blessing. Not only the ones that's in the sanctuary, but those who chime in week after week is to the glory. We praise God this morning for his unspeakable glory. He has blessed you. He has blessed me. He has blessed us. So keep on leaving, trusting, worshiping, being it, doing it willingly, blessing the Lord because he alone. You can contact us here at New Union DC. But the Bible teaches you and I that God so loved us. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because Jesus Christ came not into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. The Bible, verse 18 of John chapter 3, he said, those who believe is not condemned, but those who fail to believe are condemned so when we showed up, we was in a condemned state. But giving our lives to Jesus Christ, the Bible says if we believe, confess with our mouth and believe within our heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came, lived, died, raised himself from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. We serve a blessed Savior this morning. He has blessed us that we might indeed bless him. It starts with God going in with God. He's not say that because in the beginning at the end God still reigns. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Well, come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord Hallelujah. 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 Come on. 
down and bless 